If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I continually have problems having to re-authenticate so I can use these speakers for TTS using the media player. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk through an alternate method in order to use these speakers without actually having to authenticate. And that way they're more reliable and you don't have to worry about losing out on your text to speech because you haven't authenticated and you didn't know you weren't authenticated. So let's get started. Now, before we get started, there are some prerequisites. First of all, you need to make sure you have an Amazon account. Of course, you need to have the Amazon phone app because we'll be setting up our routines in that app. You need to have the Nabu Casa Cloud from Home Assistant. And you need, of course, to have some Amazon smart speaker devices. If you have all of those, then let's continue. All right, so you need to be comfortable being able to use uh, a code editor of some sort, either through the terminal or through something like Visual Basic or Visual Studio Code, which is what I use, because we're gonna be doing a little bit of work in the YAML files. It's not hard uh, to do this, so don't get uh, discouraged. You can still do this by following along and also understanding a little bit of YAML. Now in Home Assistant, you have the ability to split your configuration into individual files. I've had some comments or questions before on my channel about using the scripts file or where's the scripts file. I just go into configuration.yaml and tell Home Assistant you use a separate file called scripts.yaml. And this is where I place all the scripts that I use within Home Assistant. I've already got some of these defined. Um, so we're gonna kind of go through this. I'm gonna show you what I've done. Um, you may be typing this from scratch, but it's the same uh, concept, it's the same thing. So I've got four different scripts and these are scripts that have no sequences. They're just basically script placeholders. I've got one called announce garage door open. I've got one called announce garage door closed, announce fridge door open, and announce fridge temp high. The one caveat and one of the biggest cons to doing this method is you have to predefine all of your TTS stuff that you're gonna have the devices uh, speak because there's no way to dynamically create an announcement. You're going to have these scripts run. And then when you set up the routines in the app, the app is actually going to say exactly what you tell it to say for that routine. So you can't predefine the, or you can't uh, dynamically create these. They're all predefined. So my, my most uh, important ones here are having the garage door open and closed, someone leaving the fridge door open, or if the refrigerator temperature gets too high, I want my devices to speak that. So once you've created these, you're gonna save it, and then you're gonna create your binary sensors. And uh, what we do that is in here, in my case, in configuration.yaml. I have a binary sensor section of my configuration.yaml, and I define a few things. You can see I've got some other stuff to find here, but what we're most concerned with are these platforms. These are all templates. They're a device class of motion, because in the routine on the app, which I will show you in a little bit, you're gonna actually have um, what's called motion detected or detected. And when it detects that, which is what you're basically telling it here, uh, when you turn it on, then it calls that routine and, and says the, the words. So we're gonna define these and they're all exactly the same with the names changed. So it's a platform template. We have a sensor. That sensor is what I call it here in this case, announce garage door open. And of course, these are all different names, garage door closed, fridge door open, fridge temp high. Your device class is gonna be motion, like I just said. That's how the routine knows that this is something to pay attention to. And then you have a value template. And this value template is actually what the script uses. So you have a script, announce garage door open state, uh, equals on. So that way that routine now knows to use this particular script, this binary sensor. Uh, so if I turn the script on or call the script with no sequence, it turns this to on, which then tells the routine that is detected motion because you're using device class motion. And then it fires off that routine from your app or from the, the, uh, Amazon configuration. So let me go over that again. You're defining your script. These are just scripts without sequence. 
you're going to configuration, creating a template of device class motion. When you call this script, it sets the uh, state to on in this value template, which then tells the routine uh, that this script, this routine is now needs to be run. And again, I'll show you the routines here in a few minutes. Um, once you do all of this, save it, and then you're going to have to restart Home Assistant. And always, I always say this, when you're getting ready to restart Home Assistant, make sure that you check the um, status or the state of your configuration first. So we're gonna to go to configuration, we're gonna to go to server controls, and we're gonna check configuration here. And if it comes back configuration valid, then you'll restart this uh, using this button here, and that will reload your configuration. I also do this too. I just go ahead and click this button here to reload the scripts because we created the scripts. Uh, I think when you do a reload, it reloads everything, so not a big deal. But just to be safe, scripts, and then do a server restart once you've checked your configuration. If you are running the cloud, which is a requirement here, your next step is you need to go into your cloud configuration and you need to expose the entities. And for that, we go back over to configuration and we click on Home Assistant Cloud and we have to go down to our, our this section here and manage our entities. And you'll see a whole bunch of entities that are exposed and a whole bunch of entities that are not exposed. Uh, one other thing to mention too, is that you also need to make sure that you have enable state reporting turned on here. If you do not have enable state reporting turned on, it's not going to update the state whenever that binary sensor that you created in the configuration changes state. So when it goes to on, it's not going to tell the this thing that you did that. So make sure you have this enabled as well and go back to manage entities. And the four the four script or the four sensors I created are the ones that we need to pay attention to. So I called them, of course, announce fridge door open, announce uh, fridge temp high, uh, announce garage door closed, and announce garage door open. Now there's a couple of things depending on, um, well, there's a couple of things to do here. So if I search for announce just in the browser, you'll see all these announce. Um, and what it did was it dropped me down into the unexposed or not exposed section. So I have 454 not exposed. I have four motion sensors. Make sure you look at these. These are motion sensors. And if I come down here to the not exposed section, you will also see that I have four scenes that are not exposed. You don't want to expose the scenes. You want to expose the motion sensors because these are the things that will change when you call the scene. And the calling the scene will be done in your automations. So make sure, and I'll just show you here, I'll just pick something random here. If I click this box here, I want to click the expose entity check mark. And then it'll put it up here. Now it won't immediately put it up here. It will, uh, you'll have to refresh the browser for it to show up. One other thing that mine did, every time I added a new entity, or exposed a new entity to um, Homus or to this cloud, I got a notification on my app saying that you've now exposed an entity. So if your if your notifications are turned on and all that, you should get some notification that you've now exposed the entity. Now, if you've never used Nabu before, you come in here and you have 464 or 474 entities exposed. You can click on Manage Domains here. And you can turn every one of these off. It will drop them all down here to not exposed. And then you can selectively turn on the ones that you want to turn on. In my case, I have 20 out of 474 expo uh, of entities exposed. I don't want to have to go through and turn off every single one of them individually. So I just turn them all off and then only turn on the ones by clicking the box here. Only the ones that I want to turn on. Okay, so now that you have all of this done here, our next step is to go into our app on the phone and create routines to use these. And then after we do that, we will come back in and I'll show you some automations that I've set up in order to actually call these. 
So let's go over the phone and take a look at that. Okay, so now we need to come over to our Amazon uh, app. And we're going to go down here to more and we're going to click on routines. And you can see the ones that I've already got created here. Um, I'm going to add a new one just to show you how it works. And we'll give it a routine name. And I'm just going to call this test routine. So it's different than the rest. We're going to go to next. And it says when this happens. So now what we're going to do, uh, as long as you've done everything correctly, you need to, you will have the, the, uh, the different announce devices listed here. You've got to expose them first, of course, give it a little bit of time to show up. Make sure you have all those things are set up correctly on the, the first part of the video. So we're going to just say, let's say if the door is left open here. And remember, we talked about this being a motion sensor. So when we have motion detected, that's the option we want to set here. And that's set by calling. And I'll show you later on in the video how I do that. And then next, we want to um, set our action and of course, we can set this to run at any time. You can set some um, some quiet times or whatever. I prefer to set the times within Home Assistant and not the app. But if you have a very strict quiet time, you can set it here so it doesn't inadvertently do something outside of your quiet time. So I'll, I'll skip that and I'll add an action. And this action is, there's two, well, you can do a bunch of different things with your actions. If you want to, but we're talking about the speech part. So we'll stick to that. You have two options. You can do Alexa says. And under Alexa says, you can choose, oops, you can choose customized. And you would say, you know, in this case, I forgot which one I chose here, fridge door open, maybe. Oops. And say next. And that's what it will say now. Or, and that's that's a single device, because then what you're gonna do from the list is you're gonna choose which device you want it to, to play on. For me, I want these things to announce on multiple devices. So I'm gonna get rid of this one, and I'm gonna add an action, and then this action, I'm gonna say messaging. And I can send an announcement. I can say the same announcement And next, and now I get to choose which devices that I want it to play on. I can play on all devices, or I can just choose a subset of devices to play on. And then I say next, and it'll tell you what it's going to announce on next. And then when you've done all that, then you can save it. You should have test routine and you can test it by actually pushing the play button here and it will announce it for you. And if you hear it, then you're good. So that means the routine itself is working. Now what we're going to do is go back over into Home Assistant and we're going to configure some automations in Node Red that I use to call these routines. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I use these uh, routines in my automations and I'm using Node Red. Uh, you can do this also within the Home Assistant UI automations if that's your choice. I prefer Node Red because I can do a lot of visualizing of how my automations run. Okay, so I have this already all set up and I was using this before using the TTS stuff that I always had to authenticate against. And now I'm just going to use it calling those scripts. So I have a garage door uh, node here and it's the state node. So anytime the state changes, it goes to a switch and it's either going to be open or closed. And then it follows these, these uh, wires over to the open or closed. So let's assume it's open. It's going to follow the wire down here. And between 7.30 and uh, a.m. and 8.30 p.m., if the, the door's open, it's going to fire off these alerts because I don't want it speaking things in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping, which is when I talked about controlling the times. I'd prefer to control the times these announce here rather than going into the routines because then if I have multiple routines that kind of fall into the same category, I can set one control of time here rather than going to each routine and separately doing it. And then it's... Super simple. Um, I have the announce uh, open here. And it says that the title, I need to change it. Announce garage door open. 
that's a kitchen because it's how I did that before. But what I'm all I'm doing here is I'm doing the home assistant server. Obviously, I'm doing a domain of script. I'm doing a service of turn on. And so you, if you choose script, you have a choice of turn on or turn off or calling an individual script. And then the entity ID is going to be the script that we created using Visual Basic. And it's the announce garage door open script. I don't need any data. I don't need anything else. And I'm done here. So anytime this is open, it then calls that script. That script then comes over here for announce garage door open. When I call that, it then sets the value template to on for the binary sensor because it's looking at this script announce garage door open on. It sets it on, or basically it doesn't turn it on. It, it gives it the, the idea that there's motion because of a device class motion. So the binary sensor gets tripped. And then that sends that binary sensor over to the app, the routine, and says that this binary sensor has detected motion and then it fires off that announcement to my devices that I set up in the routine. Uh, I'll just show you one more here. Same thing with closed, comes down here and does exactly the same thing. It looks at the time of day. It will announce Again, I changed this, so we'll take kitchen off the name because it does all my devices now that I chose. Uh, server home assistant script is domain, services turn on, and script is announced garage door closed. And um, then it goes out and it calls the garage door closed binary sensor because it determines it's on. It calls that uh, that sensor to send motion detected to the routine. And then that motion detection fires off the routine, which then makes the announcement to all of my devices that I have selected. Now, remember that I had to do this. Um, each one of these has to be set up with its own um, text in the routine, which you saw me do. That's why you have to create a routine for every single announcement you want to make. And that's the, the biggest drawback of this. Um, I have been told that there may be some other options for the authentication, but over the last couple of three years that I've used this, I keep having the authentication issues. And so I never know for sure if this is actually gonna work the way it's supposed to. So with that in mind, I wanted to make sure that I had something that was gonna be reliable. As long as the cloud service is up, and there's not a problem with all the intermediary steps between the cloud and Amazon and all that, then it should work fine. Any internet outage will always cause a problem regardless of I'm using this, this method or using the other method. I know that it would be better to have a completely self-contained announcement system within the house, but since I already have these speakers scattered about, this is still the best, best method for me. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it answers a lot of y'all who had questions about how do I do this without having to worry about the reauthentication. This is a way to do it. I only have three or four routines that I need to set up. Uh, and it's super simple to duplicate this if I have to add another one. If I were doing dynamic announcements based on factors and you know I had a whole bunch of different ways, this may not be the best option. Anyway, if you liked the video, please give me a, a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Uh, and then hit the, the bell icon so you're alerted when I go live or make new videos. And in the comments, make sure that you ask me any questions. Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.